Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my top 10 absolute favorite young adult fantasy books. These are all my favorites, I've read them all so many times. So stay tuned for these. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and otherwise let's get into the video. As I said in a previous video, young adult fantasy has always been my favorite genre. I just love the escapism, going to a different magical world full of cool, weird things happening. And so, I, yeah, I've really related to that type of genre. Um, these books here are definitely in the top 10. So I kind of wanted to go over these, share which ones I like, and maybe give you some reading inspiration. So the first one I have here is The Last Apprentice. So this is Revenge of the Witch. I really, really love this one. This one I find is really fun for around Halloween. It's a little bit more spooky vibes, I guess. It's pretty much about the guy is a spook. And so he protects the local village or county from evil things that are happening. So I think there's like boggarts, witches, spirits, stuff like that. This guy has had a bunch of apprentices because he's, I guess, ready to retire. <laughs> and so the last apprentice is kind of the final hope to take over this man's job. So yeah, full of spooky vibes. It's definitely a fun one in October. Book two. I would be amiss if I did not discuss Harry Potter. I'm sure every one of you have read this by now. If you haven't, where have you been? Still a classic. I know there's been a lot of controversy with JK Rowling, which is really unfortunate. I try and compartmentalize because I still love the series, so I'm yeah, I don't really want that to tarnish my love for the books. So great read. Of course, there's a the whole series, books one to seven. Um, I've definitely read these ones a million and ten times and I find, especially just reading the first book, it's just really nostalgic and comforting. I love to read this near Christmas. It makes me feel all warm and cozy. The third book I have here is The Hobbit, another classic. So this one I actually didn't read until a couple years ago. My friend Megan really, really loves the Lord of the Rings series, but we found that we really like opposite books. If I like a book, she hates it. If she likes it, I love it. So she really liked the Lord of the Rings series, which kind of put me off from that. So I haven't actually read those. I will get around to them eventually. Um, but she didn't like The Hobbit, so I thought I would give it a try. And sure enough, I loved it. I think it's just so cute and wholesome and I love the kind of whimsical adventure about it. Obviously it follows Bilbo Baggins and he goes on adventure to fight the dragon Smaug with different dwarves. Yeah, it's another feel good one to be honest, so Hobbit, check it out. So next I have a book from the Folk of Air series. So you guys would have seen me reading these a bunch over the last month or so. This one is The Queen of Nothing. It's the third book. The first one is called The Cruel Prince. And these ones, I love. So what got me onto this is actually like book talk, I guess. It's definitely very fanciful. So it's about Faye, I think it's called. So Fairyland. If you're not into fairies, I still think you would like this. It follows a few mortal sisters and their experience in the fairy land. And there is a lot of court intrigue. It actually reminded me a lot of Game of Thrones, kind of like a, a toned down version of Game of Thrones, but it had so many interesting plot twists that I was not expecting, especially the first book so much stuff happens oh my gosh especially if you like powerful female main characters this is a good book for you the next book i have is the frog princess this was one of my absolute favorites as a kid Ugh, it just it's another feel good one for me it's so sweet this book follows the main character emma who's a princess and she is about to be married to 
a mean prince, Prince George. So she goes off in the woods and meets a talking frog. She kisses him and long story short, she becomes a frog as well. So they have to kind of battle the woods and figure out how to turn themselves back into humans. And it's just a really, really sweet story. The series is called The Tales of the Frog Princess by Edie Baker. I really, really like as well the prequel to the series, which is The Salamander Spell. And that one follows uh, Emma's aunt uh, when she was young and talking about when she found her love. It's definitely a feel good book. Next, I have Aragon. So I'm sure a lot of you have probably read this one if you are into fantasy. This one's by Christopher Paolini. I would say I love the first book. I wasn't a big fan of the second book. And I can't really remember the last one, so to be honest. But the first one is really, really good. It's a nice kind of adventure action-y one. So if you like ones where you know they're training in sword fighting and training to be this hero and you follow along with that. The first one follows Aragon who discovers a dragon egg which hatches and births Saphira, his dragon, and so he is one of the first dragon riders back into the land after I think close to a hundred years or something like that. So it follows his tales. Um, there's a lot of dramatics and action. It's a really, really fun book. Do recommend. Next we have The Lightning Thief, another favorite. This one is by Rick Royerden. Sorry, I'm butchering all these names. It follows Greek mythologies. Uh, Percy Jackson is in New York and he finds out that he is a demigod, so half human, half Greek god. So we follow his adventures tackling monsters, going on quests. If you like Greek mythology, this is your book. Next, I'm going to move on to the Septimus Heap series. So this one is Magic, and it's by Andy Sage. This is another one that is just like really wholesome and sweet. So this book follows specifically this one family who practice magic in a time that magic is a little bit more frowned upon. This book takes place in the winter and that's when I like to read it. I really like to read books at different times in the year. It just makes me more nostalgic and happy for that time, I guess. Yeah, it's definitely more, I would say, for kids. It's pretty basic language, but it's, again, just a sweet, quick read if you are interested in that type of thing. I believe there are four or five books in the series, but yeah, would recommend if you just want a bit of cheering up. We're nearing the end, guys. We are on my last two favorite books, and these ones are definitely up there. First, I have The Goose Girl. I think this one was kind of popular, but I'm not too sure. And this one is such a good book. So this one, it's part of the Books of Bayern by Shannon Hale. We follow Annie Dory who, oh, you guessed it, another princess. And Annie Dory is supposed to be the heir to the throne in her own kingdom, but her mom sets her aside for her brother. So she is off to marry the Prince of Bayern, but there is a coup on the way and pretty much a lot of stuff happens and she is lost in this new country that she knows nothing about and to survive and kind of lay low, she becomes a goose girl. And it's such a beautiful story. There is magic involved in it. I feel like it's not really the main part of the book. This magic in this world is more elementals. It talks about languages with the wind and fire, animals, stuff like that. It's such an incredible book. I could not recommend this one more. And last but not least, we have Wildwood Dancing. So this is one of my hidden gems. I got this one actually off thriftbooks.com. So I know if you are in America, there's amazing deals and shipping to be had with thrift books. It's a little bit difficult if you live in a different country. I know I've had orders canceled and the shipping isn't that great to be honest, but if you're in America, it's supposed to be really, really good. Unfortunately, this one doesn't really have a dust cover. So this book is by Juliette Marlier. 
I don't know if I said that right again. If you like books with bad boy lovers, but possibly unsuccessful bad boy lovers, not a bad book actually. So Jenna is the main character in this book and it takes place in, I believe, Romania. Piscol Dracul is the castle that they live in. It's a bunch of daughters and this father. The father goes away because he's very ill and kind of a mean cousin takes over. These sisters discover a portal that actually takes them to a magical kind of fairy world. And it's a bit of a dark book, to be honest. Um, it's not necessarily just happy-go-lucky fairy world. It's got a really creepy edge to it. And I actually really appreciate this about this book. This one definitely has, again, a strong female lead. And it's just really well written. And the story is very interesting. You get very attached to the characters. And it's not really like anything else I've read. So. Yeah, we're ending on a high note, Wildwood Dancing, definitely recommend. All right guys, that is the end of the video for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope I have given you a little bit of inspiration for what you want to read next. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and comment down below what you think you will be reading next. All right, bye guys.